welcome back dear students hope all of you have successfully completed the problems for practice in the pre from the previous videos and you have understood the basic concept of how to find the correlation coefficient when the data is explicitly given to you by using the three methods namely the direct method actual mean method and the assumed mean method and also how to find out the corrected correlation coefficient when there are errors involved in the results given to us that was seen in the previous video and you have successfully completed the problems which were given for practice in today's video we shall focus on what is a bivariate frequency distribution and how do we find the correlation coefficient for the same so we are talking about the bivariate two variables when i say bivariate i am dealing with two variables and the frequency connected to both the variables is mentioned then in such a way how do we construct the table and how do we find out the correlation coefficient is what we shall be focusing on in this particular video let's begin as the name suggests bivariate frequency distribution so when i use the word bivariate that means i am dealing with two variables so the two variables i shall be choosing to be x and y and when the large i am dealing with large data large mass of observations or large masses of data then they can be summarized using a two way table so just like how we defined the number of classes in a univariate case where you had only one variable here there are two variables so we shall take up m classes for x and n classes for y so that we'll have m by n cells in a two way table so usually what we do in a two way table is represent in a table if you consider we represent one variable x along the row and y values along the column and the center values will shall represent the frequency f so this frequency is pertaining to both the parameters x and y so we are going to frame the frequencies which are given to us x at, take one variable along the row take one variable along the column and construct a table such a table that we define is called a frequency bivariate frequency table or it is called a two way table so the bivariate frequency distribution is nothing but the frequency distribution of two variables now we shall see how to find out the correlation coefficient what is the formula pertaining to this particular distribution before i give the formula for the value of rho let us see how to construct this two way table now when i said two way table let us see how we have to construct so x values are assumed along the row and y values here the class intervals are given to us so in in case of uh, y so y values are taken to be the midpoints of the class intervals then we shall choose dx as we normally assume in the assumed mean method either you take it as x minus a or if there is a scaling factor you take it as x minus a divided by h similarly since you also now know the values of y you could write dy as either y minus b or you could write it as y minus b divided by k where k is the scaling factor along the y variables y values then the frequencies are mentioned along for every combination of these x and y values so when i give the frequencies so if i say this is 4 here it means 4 is the number which is pertaining to that corresponding dx value and the corresponding dy value and if this if this is the number that i want this is the frequency pertaining to this corresponding dx and this corresponding dy so that's how we read this table so once we get frame this table and understand the frequencies which are mentioned to us in the problem then what we do is construct the row wise totals so what i'm showing you now is each row values reach row add up all the values of these four terms and that will give you this f value then add up these four values that will give you this f total then row wise totals is what we write along this f column wise totals is what we write along this horizontal f so the horizontal f that we are writing here shall be the column totals 
and when you add up all these f along the row and along the column this sigma f should give you one common value so whether you add along the column or whether you add along the row sigma f should give you a similar value same value next you construct some more columns f dy f dy square f dy dx we shall use this in the formula f dx f dx square f dx dy now, how do we find f into dy? You have f already here. This is ordinary multiplication. You have dy here. So, you are multiplying f value with dy. You are filling up these column values and then you are taking its total. What do you mean by f dy square? You are multiplying f with the square of dy. So, you are squaring dy. You are multiplying with f and you are writing them along the column and then you are taking the total. Similarly, f dx. What is f dx? You are multiplying f and here you have a dx. You are just multiplying the corresponding values. You take adding up the total values and then that is giving you sigma f dx. f dx square is what is it? f into the square of dx and that is giving you sigma f dx square. Now f dx dy and f dy dx both needs to be the same because it is a multiplication of f into dy into dx. Now, how we do this part is, let me explain it to you here. If I take at random, but it will be better understood when we take up the next first problem. But I will give you an idea. So, suppose I have the frequency here to be 4. Suppose I say dx value is minus 1 and this value here is minus 1. So, what I mean by saying f dy dx is, I am multiplying f with dy, corresponding dy and corresponding dx. So, if I take the first cell, what is my f here? It is 4. What is the corresponding dx? It is minus 1. What is the corresponding dy? It is minus 1. So, what does f dy dx or f dx dy mean? It is 4 into minus 1 into minus 1. So, it is 4. So, the product of for this particular cell is 4. I will write it there in the same cell and put a box around it to recognize that those elements represent the product of f and dy and dx. So, like this, for every cell, I will construct one value. By multiplying this cell, value multiplied by dx value and its corresponding dy value. So, like this I will construct one product product of f dy dx or dx dy for all the cells and write the values in, bet, in between, between these boxes. Now, when I add the numbers along the row within the box, I will be filling up these three values and their total will give you sigma f dy dx. Similarly, when I add the box values, that is this value, this value and this value, I will fill, up, fill it up here and fill up these four values. And then when I add them up, I get this value. Kindly note, to confirm that our table is correctly written, done, these two values must coincide. So, the values of sigma f dy dx or f dx dy because it is a product. So, naturally, the overall value should be the same. So, once we are aware of sigma f, which is our capital N, sigma f dx, sigma f dy, sigma f dy square, dx square, and sigma f dy dx, which is the same here in both the cases, we use these 4 plus 3, 7 values in order to find out our value of rho, which we shall mention in the next slide. So, this is the formula, friends, for declaring the correlation coefficient for a bivariate frequency distribution. So, do you see it is similar to the one which we have done for assumed mean? Yes. What is that extra that you have here? That f which is included, the frequency component that is included and all these values are already found in the table. So, you just have to pick them up, substitute it in the formula and declare your result. So, the formula is exactly similar to the assumed mean method because that is the method we are following here and we are including that frequency component in every summation. Let us attempt this concept in a problem. Let us read the first problem. The following table gives the frequency according to groups of marks of 67 students in an intelligence test. Measure the correlation coefficient between the age and marks. So, let us try to analyze the given table. 
we are given totally n is 67 because he has told he has calculated marks for 67 students the row that he has given us is uh, age that's age 18 19 20 21 marks are given in terms of the class interval so we shall take x to denote the age and the class intervals which are given as marks and so y will be the midpoint of each of these class intervals so you see x represents 18 19 20 21 Y represents the midpoint of each class interval. So, it's 225, 275, 325 and 375. And we shall choose now DX as X minus any one of these values. I have chosen it to be 19. Now, because there is a common difference of 50 in the values of Y, so I can use 50 as a scaling factor and choose any one of these four to be my origin. So, I choose DY to be Y minus 275 divided by 50. It's 275 divided by 50. Now, let me use this in the two-way table and construct all our unknowns. Now, look at this bivariate table. We have now formed that X is 18, 19, 20, 21. That's what we said. Class intervals are given to me. I am taking the midpoint of uh, each of the class interval. I have constructed now, what did we take dy to be? We took dy to be y minus 275 divided by 50. And that gives me this values minus 1, 0, 1, 2. And your dx, we chose it to be x minus 19. So we got it as minus 1, 0, 1, 2. And all these values, which values, all these frequency values are given to us. So what's the first step that we do? F value. Add up all the row values, 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, 11. 3 plus 5 plus 4 plus 2, 14. Similarly, 21, 21. The total is 67. We are talking about 67 students. As per the question, it coincides. Similarly, take up the column totals and add the complete row values, 10, 19, 20, 18. That also gives you 67. It must give you six, the same value. Now, I asked you to multiply F and DY. So, this column values multiplied by this column values will give me sigma f dy as 52. Then I told you to square dy and multiply it by f. So, it gives you f dy square. So, you get these values. Add it up to get 116. Similarly, f with dx. Multiply f and dx to get sigma f dx. Multiply f with dx square and add up. You get 102. Now, to get the remaining, the last column and row, as I told you, we have to multiply the respective cell frequency with dx and dy. So, here you have 4 into minus 1 into minus 1. So, what is it giving you? It's giving you 4. Now, let's uh, do it again. What is for the next cell? So, next cell, it is 4 into 0. So, all these cells, whether it is second column, because your dx is 0, all these will become 0. Similarly, because this is 0 here, which is 0, this part is 0. The second value of dy is 0. So, all the second row will also give me 0. So, I will mention this to be 0. This is 0 and this is 0. Because I am multiplying with dx and dy. Now, let us do the remaining. This will become 2 into 1 into minus 1. So, it is minus 2. This is 1 into 2 into minus 1 minus 2. So, when you add up, it's 4 minus 2 minus 2. So, it is 0. Add up along the row. So, you are adding up these values 4 plus 0 minus 2 minus 2. So, it is 0. Similarly, 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. So, this is also done. Then this column is also done. 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. So, this is also 0. So, this, co this row column is also done. Let's try the two to complete the remaining. Now, if you see, this one will be 2 into minus 1 into 1. So, it is minus 2. Now, this will become 8 into 1 into 1. So, it is 8. Here, it is 5 into 2 into 1. So, it is 10. Here, it is 1 into minus 1 into 2. So, it is minus 2. Here, it is 6 into 1 into 2, which is 12. And 10 into 4, which is 40. So, when you calculate the row wise, now, let's see row wise. So, minus 2 plus 8 is 6, 6 plus 10 is 16, so this is fine. Minus 2 plus 12, 10, 10 plus 40 is 50, correct. 4 minus 4 is 0, correct. This is completely giving me 0. 
minus 2 plus 8 is 6, 6 plus 12 is 18, minus 2 plus 10 is 8, 8 plus 10 is 40 is 48. And when you add up, you see both of both these results should coincide and they are giving you 66. So that means your table is correct. And all these values that we have framed, we shall carry that forward into our formula to find out the value of rho. It's very simple. The table looks big. That's it. But the procedure is extremely simple. We have now substituted all the values that we have achieved in the formula of rho. As I said, you have only that f x a inc included here. And then we have substituted all the values that we have got from the table. And finally, we find that the value of rho is 0.415. Kindly recall that the value of rho should lie between minus 1 and plus 1. This is one problem for practice exactly in the similar manner as I explained to you in the previous problem. Kindly check whether you get this particular row by constructing the two-way table. Here, the class intervals are slightly more in number, but you have the same age factor. The problem is similar. And wherever there's a dash, it means that there is no frequency there. Instead of putting a zero, we have put a dash. You can ignore those cells and concentrate on the remaining cells. So kindly check and let me know if you get the answer for this. So this is what we have done as to summarize. What we have done is how to find out the correlation coefficient for a bivariate frequency distribution. Hope you have all understood it. Kindly do this problem to even confirm your understanding. The next video shall focus on rank correlation. Goodbye for now.